Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and the very last presidential highlights video. Only took me two years to, or actually I think it was four years. Uh, I think I started this with Washington back in December of 2020. Uh, so it took me four years, three and a half, to get these completed. But because I have a lot to talk to you guys about today, um, more pages than with Barack Obama, I'm going to just jump right into this so that my battery doesn't die and I don't have to re redo the whole thing. So today we are talking about our 45th president, Donald Trump. Here is a picture of Donald Trump, as we all know what he looks like. I really hated using that picture, but uh, I'm going to try to keep my opinions out of this. I'm just going to deliver information to you guys. So, he served from 2017 through 2021. His vice president was Mike Pence. So, in 2017, January 20th, Trump was inaugurated as the 45th president. January 21st was the Women's March, uh, Millions Around the World March. It was the largest single-day march in U.S. history. It was protesting Trump's administration and policies. January 23rd, Global Gag Rule reinstated. It was also known as the Mexico City Policy. Uh, it was a ban to international groups counseling and performing abortions. It was first introduced by Ronald Reagan in 1984 at a UN conference in Mexico City. On the same day, withdrawal from Trans-Pacific Partnership, and it directs the office of the U.S. trade representatives to pull out, or he, Donald Trump directs the office to pull out. January 27th, travel ban. Executive order to deny entry into the U.S. from Iran, Iraq, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. So basically all of the, um, all the Muslim countries, countries with a lot of Muslims in it. He suspends refugee admissions policy for 120 days, and it sparks large protests and legal challenges, so he reverses it. January 31st. Gorsuch is nominated for SCOTUS. Now, SCOTUS is the Supreme Court of the United States. Neil Gorsuch was nominated, replacing Justice Ant Antonin Scalia, who died in February of 2016. And I just said what SCOTUS means. I wrote it down in here, Supreme Court of the U.S. Uh, the Senate denied Obama from nominating uh, Neil February 13th, Flynn resigns. He was the National Security Advisor, and his name was Michael T. Flynn. He admits to misleading Pence about conversations between him and between Michael Flynn and the Russian ambassador. March 6th, new executive order on travel ban. It implements the ban from six Muslim countries, and it temporary suspend, temporarily suspends the refugee admission program. March 28th, the reversal on environmental protection. It was an executive order, and it rolls back Obama's temporary ban on coal mining and protection rule for streams. It also reverses the clean power strategy, uh, rolling that back, or rolling back the U.S. action to combat climate control, or climate change, rather. April 7th, action against Syrian government. Uh, it, you, uh, there was an order for U.S. strikes against an, air ba uh, against an air base. Syrian government launched chemical weapons attack in Idlib, killing innocents, including children. April 10th, Neil M. Gorsuch joins the U.S. Supreme Court. He's sworn in that day. May 9th, FBI Director James Comey re was removed. Trump fires Comey. He raises questions about the abuse of power and independence of the uh, independence of the FBI. May 17th, Robert Mueller is chosen as a special counsel. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein names Mueller to investigate. Russia's interference in the election. 
if you remember that. June 1st, there was a big to-do for a long time about that. June 1st, withdrawal from Paris Climate Accord. From 2015, from the 2015 Accord, there was an agreement from, it was an agreement from Obama. July 28th, the Chief of Staff, Kelly Nomad. No. Kelly, Kelly named, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, you're probably all laughing now. John F. Kelly, Kelly replaces Rinke, I would, I would pronounce it Rinke, but it's probably Rince Priebus. First name is spelled R-E-I-N-C-E. Uh, Kelly was the former general and general and secretary of Homeland Security. August 12th, Trump comments on the white nationalist rally. After the rally of neo-Nazis and the white nationalists in, Clark in Charlottesville, Virginia, Trump scolds the violence on both sides. It was strongly he was strongly criticized on not denouncing white supremacy. He, he later condemns the attack on the death of Heather Heyer. August 21st, the U.S. increases the presence in Afghanistan, trying to achieve stable peace. September 19th, the U.N. Address, 72nd session of the U.N. General Assembly in New York City. Trump focuses on America first and discusses ongoing conflict with North Korea, Iran, and Syria. October 30th, Trump officials plead in court. Uh, former campaign chairman Paul Manafort pleads not guilty to money laundering. George Papadopoulos pleads guilty to lying to the FBI. And he cooperates with the Mueller investigation. November 5th, the tour of Asian countries. Trump travels to Japan, South Korea, China, Vietnam, and the Philippines. December 1st, Flynn pleads not guilty about lying to the FBI. December 22nd, tax bill was signed. Okay, this one kind of made me mad when I read this. $1.5 trillion tax bill uh, was signed into law. It was an overhaul on federal tax code. It cuts taxes for corporations and the wealthy, and only a moderate cut to, the, to most Americans. Again, I'm going to keep my opinions out of this. 2018, January 20th, government shutdown begins. The federal government shuts down for three days because Congress can't agree on maintaining funding for the government. January 23rd, there was a trade war with China, and it begins. It continues a tariff war, making tariffs 30 to 50 percent on solar panels and washing machines. February 13th, attorney, attorney speaks on a fair. Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, admits paying Stormy Daniels $130,000 of his own money due to her affair with Trump. Remember that? February 14th. This was not in the notes. So that kind of made me mad that they did not add this. I think these people that are putting this information up on this website, which I will tell you at the end of this video what it is, uh, I think they're starting to get lazy because they were leaving a lot of things out. Parkland, Florida shooting. A former student of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shoots and kills 17 and injures 17 others. He was caught shortly thereafter and arrested within an hour after the shooting. It was the fifth worst school shooting up to today's date. Sandy Hook did surpass that one. It was it was higher. And the one that just happened, I think, well, Uvalde was also above the fifth, fifth one. Um, and then, okay, so February 16th, indictments issued for Russia, election interference. So 13 Russians were indicted. Now, March 21st, Trump, and this also was not in the notes, but I took this from memory. Trump met with students and parents about the Parkland shooting, and CNN held a town hall in Parkland. Trump said, let's arm teachers. 
March 24th, March for Our Lives. This is the only mention of Parkland that this, these notes gave me. It was held in Washington, D.C. and around the country. It was organized by students from Parkland. Emma Gonzalez's speech included six minutes of silence. During that time, students in the crowd chanted, Never again. Emma Gonzalez was kind of like the spokesperson for all the students in that shooting. March 31st, new Secretary of State, Alexander Hamilton. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Rex Tillerson serves the last day in office. The CIA director, Mike Pompeo, is, re is the replacement. May 8th, the withdrawal from Iran nuclear deal. Uh, the pulls, he pulls the U.S. out to contain the nuclear program in Iran. May 9th, the pandemic office is closed which I find very ironic, because this is in 2018, Timothy Zemer is dismissed. Uh, the senior director, he was the senior director for global health security and bio threats in the National Security Council. He was in charge of leading the U.S. response against the pandemic, against any pandemic. Hello, COVID happened a year and a half later. There was a lot of controversy about that uh, when COVID hit. Um, May 17th, the Senate confirms a new CIA director, Gina Haspel. She was the first woman to be director of the CIA. June 12th, Trump meets with the North Korea leader, Kim Jong-un, at a summit in Singapore. June 20th, the controversial child separation at the border. There was an executive order signed which ends the policy of separating children from their parents. April through June, nearly 2,000 children were separated from their parents of that year. So, July 5th, the EPA head resigns. Scott Pruitt, after being accused of mismanagement and ethics scandals. July 9th, Kavanaugh is nominated for SCOTUS. Now, I do watch a YouTuber by the name of Brendan Kavanaugh, but I don't think he's related. This is Brett Kavanaugh, and he is replacing the resigning Justice Anthony Kennedy. July 16th, Trump meets with Putin, takes place in Helsinki, Finland. He will not talk about Russia's involvement with the election. A lot of controversy about that, too. A lot of protests. August 21st, Trump's attorney pleads guilty. Michael Cohen was pled guilty for campaign. What did I put here? Campaign something violations. I was reading really fast last night. I can't read my writing. Campaign something violations. I don't know what that word says. I'm sorry, guys. Um, bank and tax fraud. Paul Manafort con was convicted of eight charges, including tax evasion and bank fraud. October 6th, Kavanaugh was appointed amidst controversy. Three women spoke out of sexual misconduct against Kavanaugh. The Senate Judiciary Committee met with one woman, uh, Dr. Christine Islesi, or Blasey, but the Senate confirmed uh, his appointment, 50 to 48. November 6th, Democrats take control of the House. Republicans gain in the Senate. Democrats gain 30 seats, so it's 225 to, to 197. And Repre Republicans gain two seats, making it 30, 53 to 42 and two independents. November 7th, Attorney General resigns. Jeff Sessions, after Trump asks him to. Uh, November, or December 12th, Trump's attorney was sentenced. Michael Cohen was sentenced to three years in prison. He paid the women hush money about their affairs with Trump. Not just Stormy Daniels, there were other women that came forward too. December 22nd, government shutdown begins. This is the second government shutdown. It was a partial shutdown about funding the border wall between U.S. and Mexico. Didn't think I was going to mention that, did you? The wall 
I did my own research on this, is 455 miles and 30 feet high. The first estimate of the cost was $28 billion. Trump suggested $8 billion. McConnell and Ryan wanted $15 billion. And the last estimate was $21.6 billion. I could think of a lot better things to do with that kind of money. January 2019, January 1st, Secretary of Defense resigns. A lot of people resigned during Trump's year in, years in office. James Mattis, Trump says he's pulling troops out of Syria. So that's why James Mattis resigned, because he didn't believe in that. Patrick Shannon, Shanahan, was a replacement. January 3rd, diversity in Congress. It was the 116th Congress sworn in. Democrats retake the House. Mary, uh, Nancy Pelosi becomes Speaker of the House. January 25th, Trump announces re reopening plan. After a 35-day shutdown, it was the longest in history, in U.S. history. Longest shutdown. February 14th, budget approval. To avert another shutdown, it provides $1.375 billion for the wall. Trump wanted $5.7 billion. So I guess this $8 billion was wrong. Uh, February 15th, the border wall funding became, becomes a national emergency. The main reason was to prevent illegal immigrants from crossing into the U.S. and to stop drug trafficking. March 22nd, the Mueller report was released. It took nearly two years. It started on May 17th of 2017. June 18th, re-election campaign launched. There was a rally in Florida. Trump starts his campaign for a 2020 election. All right, June 30th, Trump and Kim Jong-un meet at the DMZ, or Demilitarized Zone. He, Trump was the first president to cross into North Korea. Kim Jong-un crosses the demarcation line into South Korea with Trump. July 25th, although I think earlier than that, I did look it up, the president of South Korea also met with Kim Jong-un, and they did the crossing of the of the demarcation line between North and South. On both, both of them did that. July 25th, Trump calls for, Trump call to, to the Ukraine president. Um, I'm just going to say his last name because I don't remember how to, how to pronounce his first name. Zelensky. Uh, they talk about investigations of Biden and his son Hunter for alleged corruption. This is really hard for me not to put my opinion into this. August 12th, whistleblower complaint filed. There was a member of the U.S. Intelligence Committee, unnamed. Um, president is trying to get foreign interference to help him win re-election. Uh, it was not made public until September, but that's coming up. August 29th, Space Command. The creation of U.S. Command... The responsibility, it was a responsibility for military operations, and it was part of the Department of Defense. Now, September 24th goes along with August 12th. Uh, Democrats begin impeachment inquiries. Nancy Pelosi announces a formal impeachment inquiry over this complaint um, where Trump is trying to get foreign interference to help him win the election. November 13th, impeachment hearings are televised. That was the first day of them. December 18th, Trump is impeached over abuse of power. It was a vote of 230 over to 197. Obstruction of justice, 229 to 198. He was the third president to be impeached. The first president was Andrew Jackson in 1868, and the second one was Bill Clinton in 1998. 2020, what a year. January 3rd, some Suleimani drone strike. Uh, U.S. kills General Qasem Suleimani of Iran. Iran vows retaliation strike. Now, that I don't remember. January 7th, Iran retaliates against the U.S. They, they launch two ballistic missiles into two bases in Iraq. There were no deaths. There were U.S. soldiers that were stationed there. January 16th, NAFTA was replaced. 
In a vote of 89 to 6, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement, otherwise known as the USMCA, it replaces the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. Same, pretty much the same thing, it's just a different name. February 2nd limits travel from China. COVID began in a wet market in Wuhan, China, infecting thousands during the Chinese New Year. There is a video that, if I can find it, I will put it in the description, and it explains everything from people that were there. It was not created in a lab. It was not because of infected bat meat, okay? And the name of the channel is Four Corners. The number four and corners. Okay, there was a separate video on this subject. I will, okay, yeah, so I will do a separate video on this subject with non-media facts. Okay, not what you heard in the media, but these are actual facts. Mostly from this video that I'm, that I'm tell, talking to you about. February 5th, the Senate acquits Trump. The abuse of power vote was 52 to 48, and obstruction of Congress was 53 to 47. Very close. February 26th, White House Coronavirus Task Force was created. As COVID spreads from epidemic to pandemic, Vice President Mike Pence is appointed to oversee the management. By March 1st, two people in Washington had died, and other states report cases. California, Florida, Illinois, New York, Oregon, and Rhode Island. March 11th, coronavirus pandemic escalates. The World Health Organization states COVID is now a pandemic, which means global or a global pandemic. Trump announces a 30-day travel ban on Europeans into the U.S. Schools move to online classes, events are canceled, and social distancing. On the same day, delivery service, oh, no, I'm sorry, I was putting this uh, as a side note, delivery services such as DoorDash and Uber Eats increase greatly and gas prices plummet. I can specifically tell you that that happened because I, that's when I started doing DoorDash in May of that year. March 13th, the pandemic becomes a national emergency. Americans are urged to stay home. Every hospital was to activate their emergency preparedness. Side note, total chaos. Toilet paper, hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, and Amazon users. I will briefly go into this at the end of my video if I have time. If I remember. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys all remember that when nobody had any of those products and Amazon users were selling them on their websites for an inflated amount. March 27th, economic shutdown and relief efforts. U.S. leads the world on most cases of COVID. Oh, yeah, because we had the most cases of COVID. That's what it meant. Okay. Uh, businesses are shut down. Events are canceled. Trump signs a $2 trillion emergency spending bill called the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security, or CARES Act. I hate to tell you people this, but when, when COVID first started, I looked up the word coronavirus, and coronavirus is like a balloon term used for anything from a common cold to the flu to pneumonia, and then COVID was also part of it, because COVID stood for coronavirus, COVID ID, I don't remember what the ID stood for. And then 19, because it started at the end of 2019. April 22nd, unemployment hits 22 million due to the business shutdowns. April 22nd, there was a withdrawal from the International Arms Treaty. At the NRA annual meeting, Trump announces the pullout. May 30th, SpaceX launches launch was a success. Trump attends the second attempt of the SpaceX Dragon launch. It was meant to ferry passengers and cargo to the International Space Station. I looked that up. 
Uh, the same day, this also was not in the notes, George Floyd was killed in Minneapolis by police over a fake $20 bill at a, at a small convenience store by the name of Cup Foods. People forget that why he was being arrested. He had a fake $20 bill. Four officers were involved uh, on kneeling on George until the paramedics came. Derek Chauvin knelt on his neck, killing him. Derek Chauvin did, did end up going to jail. But that might be in the Biden information because I think he, I think Biden was president when, no, maybe it wasn't. Because that happened when I was in Amarillo and that was in 2021. No, maybe Biden was. I don't know. Anyway, Chauvin is in, is in jail. Uh, I think he's serving 240 years or something. I can't remember. June 1st, clearing the protesters for a photo op. In a nationwide pro in nationwide protests over George Floyd's death, Trump walks to St. John's Church in Lafayette Square for a photo op. Riot police and military police used tear gas and, and stun grenades to clear the protesters at the park. Lafayette. Reminds me of Hamilton. I was chosen for the Constitutional Convention. June 20, 20th, uh, Silver Star, will you stop laughing, please? June 20th, pandemic rally com campaign held in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was the first rally since COVID shut down the country that Trump was involved in, in public space. July 7th, withdrawal from the World Health Organization. Trump tells Congress and the UN it will be made effective in 2021. July 30th, Trump questions mail-in voting. In a tweet, Trump suggests delaying the November election. Only the Congress can change the date of the election, which they did not do. August 2nd, or August 6th, social media national security concern. Executive order bans the use of TikTok and WeChat in the U.S. within 45 days if, the Chi if Chinese companies refuse to sell them, parent companies refuse to sell them. August 8th, Trump expands economic relief. There were four executive orders to help people during the pandemic. Payroll tax holiday, extending unemployment benefits, providing protection to protect evictions, and suspending student loan payments. That did not happen during Biden's time. That happened during Trump's time. For those of you that think Biden did that, he just continued it. Um... <clears throat> August 10th, ad, ad, advocating for education amidst the pandemic. The cases are now at 5 million and rising at over 160,000 deaths. I don't remember if it said worldwide or just in the nation. Uh, Trump pushes for the schools to reopen, but the schools say no and continue online learning. August 20th, Bannon was arrested. Steve Bannon was responsible for the Breitbart News website. He was charged with defrauding donors using money donated to build the wall for his personal expenses. September 18th, the Supreme Court Justice Ginsburg dies. Ruth Bader Ginsburg died of complications of metastatic pancreas cancer. September 20th, the GOP pushes to nominate the, a justice. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell plans to move forward to fill the vacancy. Now remember, this is just shortly before the election. September 26th, Trump swiftly announces the Supreme Court nomination as of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. September 27th, 20, New York Times article on president tax returns. Trump paid no federal income taxes in 10 of 15 years beginning in 2000. Excuse me. October 2nd, POTUS and FLOTUS test positive. Now, POTUS, I did not know what that meant, means President of the United States, and FLOTUS means the First Lady of the United States. So Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have COVID. On October 5th, many White House officials, staff, press, and senators also test positive. 
November, October 9th, commission cancels the second debate between Trump and Joe Biden because Trump was, had, had just gotten over COVID. The third and final debate does take place on October 22nd in Nashville, Tennessee. So October 22nd, GOP access accesses social media of censorship. Now, I wanted to know what GOP meant, so I looked it up, and it means Grand Old Party, which is also an, the, another term for the Republican Party. Facebook CEO Mike Mark Zuckerberg and tw Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey are forced to address the allegations. A New York Post article, uh, it, it prevents people from from sharing a New York Post article regarding allegations of Biden fa Biden family business relations and deals with Ukraine. October 26th, GOP confirms SCOTUS as Amy Con Connie Barrett, Coney Barrett. So that's the Supreme Court. November 2nd, Trump final campaign rally. Trump's final campaign rallies. He hosts several large rallies in key swing states. Didn't list which states, and I didn't look it up. November 3rd was Election Day. Trump carries 23 states, 213 electoral votes. No winner is declared due to mail-in ballots. November 4th, <coughs> sorry, November 4th, Trump declares victory. He claims remaining ballots be thrown out due to fraud. November 7th, press calls the race for Biden. AP and many news outlets announce that Biden won the presidency. November 13th, Trump campaign contests the election. After results are given, Trump files lawsuits in key swing states to contest, a, to contest the election. It claims, he claims voter fraud from mail-in ballots. Georgia was one of these states. Now, that's important because he was actually, I think I go into that, in another, which will be another separate video, which I'll tell you about at the end of this. December 2nd, Justice Department concludes voter fraud investigation. The U.S. Attorney General, William Barr, states there was no voter fraud found. December 11th, the FDA approves a COVID vaccine. The U.S. FDA starts distributing the first emergency use vaccine to people 16 and over. It was the Pfizer BioNTech. December 13th, the Supreme Court rejects claims of voter fraud. Uh, it was brought by Texas Justice Department and 17 states alleging it. December 14th, Bill Barr resigns. It comes after Trump threatens to fire him over voter fraud decision. December 16th, Electoral College declares the 46th POTUS. Official announcement of Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris as the winners. It ends the legal battle by Trump. 2022. Oh, hello, Dusky. Hi, Duskers. January 2nd, phone call was leaked. Trump calls the Secretary of State of Georgia to pressure him to find votes so he can win the election. That video is on YouTube, so you can look that up. Secretary of Records... Uh, I'm sorry, the Secretary of State of Georgia records the call and leaks it to the press the next day. And the Secretary of State was Brad Rothensberger. January 6th, mob attacks the U.S. Capitol. Trump encourages thousands of supporters to march to the Capitol. This is quotes from the, from the speech that he gave. March to the Capitol. I'll be right there with you, which he wasn't. We know they stole this election. Uh, he supports... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Supporters illegally broke into the Capitol causing destruction, trespassing, and defy the police. Police shoot and kill one supporter, and one Capitol Police officer dies of his injuries. Many are arrested, and it was all televised. Congress, who were counting the ballots at that time, were rushed to safety, including Nancy Pelosi. January 13th, the second impeachment. He was, Trump was the first president ever to be impeached twice. 
it was the the charges were incitement of of insurrection from January sixth. House votes two hundred thirty two to one hundred ninety seven, and ten representatives or Republicans support it. January twentieth, Trump leaves the office. He was the first president since eighteen sixty nine to skip the inauguration. He flies to Florida, Mar a Lago, Mar a Lago. Kind of pouting. Sorry. Okay, so this ends the presidential highlights videos. Um, because obviously Biden is currently still in office and his information will not be up for months. So at this point, I'm going to give you the name of the website that I went to to get all this information from all 45 presidents. The name of the site is called MillerCenter.org. And what I would do is I would type in the search bar, the name of the president and key events. And then you can click on the key events and everything I've reported to you is in there. Okay? So now you guys know where I got this information from. MillerCenter.org Now, in a separate video, because I'm sure I'm going to be, my, my battery's probably going to be flashing fairly soon. I don't know how long I've been talking for. Let's see. What does it say? How long have I been talking for? I don't see the timer on here. Usually it gives me a time of how long I've been talking. Oh, right there. 36 minutes. Okay, only half an hour. Well, I'm still going to make this a separate video. I might put that video on my Presidential Highlights video uh, playlist um, because it will be kind of a presidential type of thing, but it's not a highlights video. Um, I'm going to be talking about the upcoming election. So I'm going to be talking about the jobs of each person in, in government with between you know from the president to the vice president to congress to senate to the house of representatives and then i'm going to be talking about each of the uh candidates for the democrats and for the republicans and i'm also going to list the person that i think should not have dropped out of the race in january but i think he would be an awesome president for this upcoming election. You can write in people on the ballot. You don't have to vote for the person that's on the ballot. I think a lot of us forget that. So I'm hoping if I tell you guys this information, maybe you guys will write in this person because he's a Republican. Um, he's not currently write, running, but you can write him in. But I'm going to use that in a separate video. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have noticed my shirt. It's a 9-11 shirt because in two days from now, uh, we will be remembering 9-11 in 2001, which makes this the 23rd year. Dusky, stop it! Hey! Hey! He keeps chewing on the bars on the cage, and I want him to stop doing that. Dusky! Give me just a second, guys. Hey! Knock it off! <laughs> Stop! No, no, no! 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 Get back! Stop! Okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> Not part of the presidential election, or pre presidential highlights video, but uh, Dusky tends to chew on the bars of the cage. I do have chew toys in there for him to use, but he never chews on them. He just prefers to chew on the cage. I guess hamsters do that. But um, So anyway, 9-11. Uh, this shirt obviously was from 10 years uh, after 9-11 happened because it's 2011. Um, but we will be remembering the people that, the, the events that happened on 9-11. I've never been to New York, never had the desire to go prior to 9-11. Now I would love to go because I'd love to see the museum and I would love to see the site where it happened. Uh, I've heard it's a very different um, feel there than the rest of the city. 
It's a very somber feeling. I've heard this from many people that have been there. Um, but as far as the next video, what which will be all this information that I have uh, for all the different jobs and what everybody is responsible for. Because I think what we do is we just listen to the news and we don't really do our own research. Please, 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 people, don't listen to the news. Listen to your own head and heart and do your own research on these people. I did the research for you. I will give you snippets of what I learned uh, from non-media sources. Um, that'll be in a separate video. And I also plan to do a video on COVID. I was going to talk something about COVID, I think. I mentioned that I would talk about it at the end of the video. What was I going to mention about it? How COVID started, maybe? Let's see. Where am I at here? I honestly don't remember what I was going to talk about, except for maybe the COVID thing. Um, oh, the four, four Corners video. Okay, so at the beginning of COVID, I'm just going to mention this briefly in this video, and then I'll probably re-mention it in what I'm going to call my COVID video, whatever I, whatever I title it. Um, it's going to be strictly facts, mostly from this video that I saw. I did some my own research that was not based on any media. These people that were in China for the Chinese New Year came from Australia, they came from America, they came from all over. They were staying in the in these I don't know if they were hotels or apartments or something that they rented or something for the Chinese New Year and they were stuck in China because of the pandemic that was, you know, the, the COVID that started there in December of 2019. And what was sent, Dusky, I swear, hang on. You better knock it off. Stop. Knock it off. Okay, again, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to take care of a hamster. Um, where was I at? Okay, so they said that it started in a wet market, the single wet market in Wuhan, and thousands and thousands of people were dying on the street, and these people were all quarantined in their, in their residences that were stuck there, they were filming out their video, or they're filming out where they were staying. Uh, they were like YouTubers, like me, not media, but like normal everyday people were filming out their, out their, with their cameras out their, out of their windows across the street, where they were showing that the government was actually like chaining and welding the shut the doors of these high-rise apartments so that people couldn't get out or in. And I was thinking, what happens if there's a fire in those buildings and those people can't get out because the doors are welded shut and they live on the upper floors? How do these people get food? How do these people get out? I mean, it's just, it was so sad. Like, this, this town of Wuhan had millions of people and the the videos were showing absolutely nobody on the streets now here's the interesting fact 72 days at, or 72 or 75 days after the uh, uh covid started the last person left the hospital and they have never had that many people infected with covid ever again all because the government over there, de like they would pull people out of, the, they'd go to these people's homes and they'd take their temperatures and if they had a temperature, they would drag them out and bring them to the hospital or if they did not have a temperature, they were forced to stay indoors. They could not leave their homes at all. 
not like what we did here in the United States. People could leave their homes. They just had to social distance, whatever. But that's why we, had, we dealt with the pandemic a lot longer than China, where it started. I'm not saying, I kept saying to people, if we would just do what Wuhan did, maybe COVID would disappear for good, just like it did not in China. And people are like, well, that would never work. I'm not saying that the government require us to do that. I'm saying we as people should have done that from the beginning. We shouldn't have gone anywhere. We all should have stayed in our homes. You know, those of us that did uh, food delivery and stuff, like DoorDash and Uber Eats, they were, I was making money hand over fist during that time. Um, and grocery stores and stuff like that. They, they would be the only people that were allowed out and everybody else could get their food delivered to them in their homes. And that way the COVID would not have spread so bad and would not have made us the number one country with the most cases of COVID in the world. Just my thoughts on it. Um... So I will give those facts to you, even though I just kind of sort of did just now. But I will give actual facts in that other video. And if I can find that video on YouTube, I will link it in the description below so you can watch it. It was not cooked up in a lab. The only part of that video that showed that they were cooking it in a lab in Australia was that they were trying to replicate it so that they could make a vaccine that would work. Now, the other thing about the vaccine, you know what, maybe I'll just leave that for the other video. Because I've learned some new information about it since in, in recent months. Doing my own research. I don't listen to the news. So at this point, I'm going to say thank you for joining me on this very long four-year journey of presidential highlights. Um... Now that you've gotten to the end, and I know I have put this in several of my other videos for presidential highlights, I would really love to know if you've watched all of them from the beginning. If not, you can go back and rewatch them. They're in a playlist on my channel. Um, who you feel, based on the information I gave you, um, who you feel was the greatest president this country has ever had. Now, I think I've said this before, but I'm it bears repeating. I believe FDR was our best president ever. He was our longest reigning president. He started a lot of different programs, including the Social Security program. He turned this country around four years, four years of Hoover dra dragging us into a depression. Within nine days of FDR taking office, he opened hundreds of banks with the plan to open thousands more within the next month. So within days, he was already turning this country around. I think that's very, very impressive. No other president has ever done that, according to my research. So I believe FDR was our greatest president. He served for 12 years. He served four terms. He died in his fourth term shortly after he was inaugurated. Um, and even though up to that point, any of the previous presidents could have served more than two terms, nobody served more than two, um, except for FDR and FDR changed the date of our inauguration. FDR made it law that they, that nobody can serve more than two terms. Now that can be overturned, but it has to be approved by Congress. I did read that because I think I read uh, during Biden's time that uh, Trump was thinking of, re of doing that for himself or something that Trump had said recently that if he's elected, you'll never have to elect another president again because he's going to change everything within four years and we'll never have to elect another president again. So whether he means he will be the only president from now on or after four years, there will be no reason for government or leadership. I don't know. Read it. Read what you want into that. 
He said it. I saw it on a video. It, in his words, he said it. Just like he said for for COVID that we should inject disinfectant into our bodies because that kills the coronavirus or COVID. He's. I saw the video for that too, and he was taught. He was not kidding. He was not laughing. Nobody was laughing. He was acting. Doc, asking Dr. Fauci about it. That was true. He said it, and then he claimed, "Oh, I was just joking." Well. I'm sorry, that was not a joke, because he said he thought it would be a good idea, along with some other things that were suggested. Um, so, please, comment below. Tell me what you think of these videos, if you thought it was a good idea. I originally did this because I was inspired from the, from the play Hamilton, and I wanted to know how our country started and what each president brought to the table. Seems like this country has really gone downhill over the last few presidents. Um, but hopefully things will turn around soon with the election of a new president in a couple of months, and that'll be a separate video. So tell me who you think our greatest president was and why. Um, tell me what you thought about this series, and I'm not going to ask you to tell me who you're voting for, because that's personal. Um... But yeah, I would be interested to know what you thought of these of this series. Uh, sorry it took me four years to do it. I meant to do it like one president every week <laughs> until it got to FDR. Um, but I have all my notes in like three notebooks. Had to keep buying more notebooks because they kept filling up. Um, and I know what I'm going to do with that information too. So... Anyway, and I hope you've enjoyed like some of the newspaper articles that I've saved over the years and got from people or bought from flea markets or whatever. Some of them were copies. Um, quite interesting to read about the Titanic and, and Pearl Harbor and all that stuff that I've got. Those actual newspapers, um, they're copies, but they're newspapers. And I showed them in those times. <laughs> And then I showed you more recent ones that I've kept of big news stories like Sandy Hook, and I still have those over here, and, and then the the new, uh, the magazines of Bin Laden's death and 9-11 um, and, uh, and stuff like that. So anyway, at this point, I'm going to say stay safe in the next week being that it's the anniversary of 9-11. You never know what kind of crazy things are being cooked up that we don't know about because it was kind of a surprise to the rest of us that 9-11 happened. Um, and with an election coming up, you never know. Something may happen. Usually they do that on the anniversaries, even though Bin Laden is dead. I'm sure that some other leader will come into play or whatever. Um, but stay safe. Thank you for joining me for these Presidential Highlights videos. Now you can do your own research through MillerCenter.org. And you can go back and expand your education on some of these things that I just touched on. I didn't write everything out. Uh, some, of the, some of the writings on some of the things were like this long, and I made it like that long. So um, I just didn't feel like writing everything out, but you can go in and research all that. So do your own research, and then going forward, you can go to MillerCenter.org and learn about presidential key events after the president is out of office and give them a few months to put that information up because um, they don't get to it right away. But they have been getting kind of lazy because, like I said, they didn't mention Parkland. They didn't mention George Floyd in this one. So I put that information in there from memory. So I'm going to bid you a sunny day at this point. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you on another video, uh, whether it be uh, Adventures with Chloe or a blog or the next, the next political uh, video about the jobs and, and the candidates. Uh, that should be quite informative because I learned a lot doing that too. I learned a lot during all of this. I thought it was pretty interesting. 
So thank you, Lynn manuel Miranda, for giving me the inspiration to do this. It took me four years. It took him seven years to write Hamilton. Um, he's about due to put out another play, I think. <laughs> he's got his his uh, he's got his hand in a lot of things, a lot of cookie jars. All right, so thank you for joining me. You guys have a sunny day, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.